Hi, my name is Cenk Kusus, and I'm a physics master's student at Middle East Technical University. Today, I will be talking about hybrid quantum classical graph neural networks for particle track reconstruction. In my talk, I will start by defining uh, what is particle track reconstruction. Then uh, I will uh, try to explain what uh, we are doing with quantum computing and how we are combining with machine learning. Then I will talk about uh, our hybrid graph neural network approach. Then uh, I will share our results and finalize my talk with comments on future improvements. Particle track reconstruction problem is a common problem to all LHC experiments. When we have two beams colliding, there are many new particles uh, going outwards in uh, all directions. And when these particles are charged due to the magnetic fields uh, of the experiments, they will be bending. So it makes the particles too hard, hard to track. Uh, and also our detectors are discrete, meaning that we can only measure them at certain distances. So we need to connect these measurements, uh, as you can imagine as like dots, and we want to associate them to tracks. And this is called particle track reconstruction. However, this problem gets uh, really hard to do as uh, the modern algorithms are scaling worse than quadratically. Uh, and with the new upgrade of high luminosity LHC, this problem is uh, going to be uh, something of a uh, logistic challenge. Why? Uh, if you look at the plot on the right, uh, on the y-axis, you see the CPU consumption. And according to expectations, uh, the CPU consum consumptions will be uh, over exceeding the budget expectations of CERN in uh, like almost five years. So this will be a problem. And uh, this is why we are exploring more efficient ways to do this. If you look at the table uh, here, uh, the mu is number of average number of interactions per bunch crossing. So this will be the particles that we are colliding. At first, CERN started with 21, then they switched to 40. But now with the new upgrade, we are expecting to reach to 200. But this would mean that we need to process 15 times more tracks. And this will put a lot of burden to the algorithms. That's why CERN created a public challenge to invite machine learning uh, uh, experts all over the world to contribute to this problem. Uh, so on the left, you see the detector layout they used, and this is uh, only shown in 2D. And uh, if you want to look at the 3D version, you can see it on the top right hand side. Uh, the problem with this is there are, uh, uh, combined, there are ambiguities combined with the number of tracks. So if you look at on the right, you will see that we have vertical layers as well as uh, horizontal layers. So when we uh, see the particles appearing in the horizontal layers, they can switch to the vertical layers, but they can also go upwards. But sometimes uh, it will be hard to distinguish uh, where the switch is happening. So this will also create some ambiguity. And if you look at one of the uh, uh, novel approaches to this problem, it is a uh, graph neural network uh, made by the heptrack uh, project team. In their uh, model, uh, they took a graph neural network and uh, they constructed these measurements as a graph. Uh, what they are doing is they are feeding this graph into the graph neural network and in the output, they are trying to observe the uh, desired tracks. If you look at on the top right hand side, you see a model score uh, uh, of their preliminary results. And you'll see that they can achieve 99.5 accuracy, which is quite promising. And uh, recently they also extended this model uh, to uh, more complex uh, uh, data sets. And uh, in uh, the new version, they renamed the project to be uh, Exatrack X. So we will try to uh, put uh, quantum computing and machine learning on top of their uh, model. Before trying to uh, process anything in a quantum computer or starting to do graph neural networks, we need to understand how we construct the data so that uh, this information is not available to us as a graph. And we need to construct the graph and that will also create some computational uh, expenses. So uh, to, to, to do this, we are starting from a simple uh, data set model. Uh, and this means that we are only taking the horizontal layers and this will look like a barrel shape. Uh, we take the hits, we, hit, we, hit, we take the tracks from uh, this geometry 
and we apply a cut on their momentum so that we get only a portion of the particles. And here you see the distribution of an event and we are only taking the particles from the right hand side. This is not something uh, everybody is doing, but to work with uh, quantum computers, we need to limit the data. And this is why we are doing this. And when we have access to more computational resources, we can uh, just completely ignore this restriction. Then we uh, apply some criteria on uh, the each, each segment so that we can create a, a meaningful uh, graph. After applying this hits, uh, we are constructing the graphs that uh, you can see on the right hand side. So on the left plot, you see the fake edges, the ones that we want to get rid of. And on the right side, you see the edges uh, that belong to the uh, particles. So this means that if uh, two of this uh, black dots you are seeing belong to the same particle, this will be a true edge. Uh, and uh, below, you can see a distribution of uh, these 100 graphs. And again, we only use 100 graphs out of uh, 10,000 of the TRACAML dataset. And this is because simulating quantum computers are really hard and uh, we need to limit ourselves so that we can get meaningful results in meaningful times in, yeah. So, okay, coming back. So we have the graph now and we first feed this into an input network. The input network is a simple uh, single layer fully connected neural network layer that increases the hidden dimension size of our uh, measurements. So uh, we call these measurements as hits and also as nodes. So a node has three spatial coordinates, R, phi, Z in cylindrical coordinates, and also the hidden dimensions that are encoded uh, with the help of the input network. So edge network takes uh, nodes connected by the, the graph and uh, process them in, with, with a, a neural network inside and uh, gets us an output uh, being if the edge is a true edge or a, a fake edge. So if zero, it is fake, one is true. And we will be getting a value between zero and one, and we will be able to distinguish uh, and put a threshold on this to decide. Then this edge information is processed with the node network. So node network works on triplets of hits. And uh, as you see now, we have some values for this uh, edges. And with the edge information, uh, we multiply the node information with this. And we combine them to construct this hyper triplets. Uh, then node network takes this, uh, uh, the input, output, and the target uh, nodes and processes them with the hybrid neural network inside to uh, update the hidden node features. So now we have seen uh, how they are working, but up until this point, uh, you didn't see any uh, uh, progress made by us actually. So now we will switch to quantum computing and see how we update these models to work along with quantum computers. To do this, let's first look at how quantum machine learning works in a single uh, simple slide. So. In quantum computing, states can be uh, expressed on the block sphere uh, for uh, one qubit. And you see that the zero state starts from here. And we can use the parameterized circuits to uh, visit different points of the block sphere. So with the circuit, you see that we can explore these locations. And uh, coming to a more complex circuit, we can explore uh, many more points on, on the sphere. So this means that uh, now we have a way uh, to travel uh, along uh, the surface of the block sphere. So in machine learning, what we are doing is taking these points and training them with the, their labels so that the labels, uh, the data points with the same labels are close to each other and we can classify them easily with uh, something like this uh, you are seeing. This is just a way to do this. This is not always how it works. But uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, shortly uh, explain how uh, quantum machine learning is kind of uh, working with uh, the states. Uh, so a recent approach is uh, using uh, the circuits as quantum classifiers. And you see here that a very simple four qubit circuit can handle 
classification of MNIST dataset, which is a very popular uh, dataset in neural networks. So you see that for many instances, we see uh, accuracies of 90%, and uh, these are different settings of this uh, circuit. And it shows that like with such a simple thing, we can actually do classification. So now uh, we will be taking this idea and combine that with neural networks. And uh, we call this network, the hybrid net neural network in our model. Uh, how it works is it takes the information, it sends it to a single fully connected layer, which is a classical neural network layer. And the output is fed to the information encoding quantum circuit. This will uh, take the data and embed uh, it on the Hilbert space so that we have cre we create this dots that you have seen on the block sphere. The parameterized quantum circuits will have parameters that we need to tune to uh, make those uh, states move along the block sphere as we uh, just see. Then we will take the measurements to see uh, the outcomes. And then there's expectation values that we're calculating will be fed to another single fully connected layer to finally get our desired outputs. For this purpose, we selected uh, two circuits, one with a simple uh, layer, as you see on the top. Uh, it only has uh, a single set of uh, uh, parameterized gates and uh, uh, CZ gates uh, as entanglers. And the circuit 19 has a little bit more uh, gates and also controlled rotations. And we will uh, use these layers and uh, see how it affects our model. And to compare this uh, circuits, there are uh, a few proposed ways to do this in the literature, but they are still uh, uh, premature and they do not always give uh, promising outcomes uh, about the performance of the model. So when we take a circuit, we need to test it and see uh, to uh, understand how it will perform. Uh, so here you see a comparison of these two circuits for expressibility, which uh, gives you an idea of uh, how many locations you can visit on the Hilbert space. And entanglement capacity gives you an idea of uh, how much entanglement you can create. So uh, in these instances, you see that 19, uh, circuit 19 has better accessibility and entanglement capacity, but we will see that uh, uh, these uh, values being higher, that doesn't always mean that uh, we get a, a better uh, performance out of the circuits. So coming to the results, uh, you see that uh, we used uh, circuit 19 to compare different number of layers. And here uh, we uh, experimented with hidden dimension four and hidden dimension 10. And when we increase number of layers, uh, you see that we are getting better accuracies uh, in uh, both cases. And uh, this is uh, telling us that our model is uh, working as we expected. And when we look at uh, the comparison of circuit 10 with 19, uh, along with the HEPCHECX uh, version, with the uh, increasing iterations of um, uh, the graph neural network, we are uh, getting better results, uh, not all the time, as you see in the blue line, uh, but we are still uh, under uh, the classical model, but uh, we are trying to improve on this. So when we make a full comparison with uh, circuit 10 and the HEPCHECX X model, we see that with increasing hidden dimension size, we are kind of similar to the classical model, but uh, not all the time. And uh, so we couldn't actually process uh, more than 16 qubits and we had to stay here to uh, see our results. So this means that there is still uh, a little bit more to do, a little bit more to explore. And here uh, we present uh, some uh, ways to improve this performance. So to conclude, uh, we show that our results are promising. They can achieve similar to novel uh, classical models, but there are still challenges. So the biggest challenge is simulation times are very long and uh, access to real quantum hardware is very limited. And this limits us from experimenting with these models. And how we can improve this performance is uh, we can use more layers, explore different circuits, and also different architectures. And also as something uh, common to most uh, neural network models, we can use uh, more data to improve the performance of our model. And uh, 
as, it is, as things to explore, uh, we haven't uh, shown any uh, hardware or shot noise effects in this work. And this is something to be explored. And also in the future, we can uh, we plan to uh, provide uh, a more extensive overview with more layers and iterations. Before uh, finishing my talk, I would like to thank my contributors from uh, different institutes. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>